You're tuned in to On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin on 9.30 a.m. The Answer, home of conservative talk radio, where our politics is black first and our identity is the American descendants of the former enslaved foundational black people. That's right. We're the originals, right, here in this great country of America. We are building allies with people that we choose, not the ones that were chosen for us. And we always keep in mind here of uh, the words of Malcolm X, hey, we are not so blinded by patriotism that we can't be in touch with reality. All right, I love that intro. Are you like, you guys like that? I like All that. Right. I was just at the Sutton House, hey, uh, on, Malcolm on, X's on, lawyers. Hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll give you a chance. Hey, to correct you on the radio now. <laughs> I like right. that. We want to explain, Tiffany, why we do what we do uh, in, in this healthcare space, which is what we want to do, right? So we want to give our, uh, our uh, Reg the opportunity to explain why he why he's a kidney ambassador, and then we'll give you an opportunity to explain why you work with the Kidney Foundation, and then I'll do the same there. Okay? Sure. Okay. <laughs> can we have a conversation? Yes, we can. So Reg, tell us why yeah. you're involved with the foundation, and uh, you know, give us the, what's going on, and, and tell us what's why you do what you do. With us. Well, the first first reason, I mean, I'm the type of person that um, I look at causes and look at different uh, issues and, you know, I, I dabble in it here and I dabble in it there. But when something hits home, when it when it affects you personally, which uh, kidney disease has affected me personally and um, the process that I went through, you know, for as the um, got screened and, um, you know, well, basically I had a issue with, um, you know, the complications of kidney disease. So when I went through that process with the doctors and the, the uh, dialysis and the kidney transplant, I was like, you know what, I know this, I mean, this, this, this is something that's real close to me now. You know, I know the process that I went through and if I can stop anybody, uh, help anybody, um, to stop, you know, uh, to, to ward off going through the whole process that I went through, you know, and if they have to go through the process, I want to give them knowledge of, of, um, what to expect and, um, know that the options that they have is not the options that they probably only been told. So mm -hmm. there are many options to deal with this situation. And I want to bring that to the forefront so that people could understand, you know, what um, kidney disease is and um, how it how will it affect your whole family, not only your life, but, you know, everybody mm -hmm. around you. So that's what makes me want to be a part of this, this, this um, uh, crusade to fight kidney disease, you know, because it's, it's real dear and near to my heart, man, because I've been through it. You know, and um, my wife been through it with me, my kids. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's something I, I really believe in, man, because, you know, all the other things that I look at, I, it, it really have an effect me in, in that in that in that way. But this is something that, man, you know, you can feel it. And I've been through it. And and I want to let everybody know that there is a way you it, it's not a death sentence. And, um, you know, you don't have to be afraid to go and get screened, get checked. Some people may feel that their kidneys is not uh, functioning properly, but too afraid to go to the doctor because they, they, they don't want to hear the, the the diagnosis. And they think it's like a, a life sentence where they have to be locked down for four hours every day doing mm -hmm. dialysis. It's not like that. So I want to, you know, educate people to know everything about the things that, that um, kidney disease involves. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Tiffany, any comment on that? Well, I was just going to say, I, I I understand that because, you know, it strikes passion in your heart because you know, when you see somebody go through kidney disease, when you have it yourself, it is, it, there is a certain amount of fear attached to that where, okay, what am I going to do next? There's not a cure for kidney disease. So as soon as you hear that there's not a cure for kidney disease, immediately you think that there aren't options. But there are options. You know, and once you go through this with family and see like what the different options are and how they can be exercised, 
and you want to see it from the rooftops so that you can let people know a early detection is probably the key to all of it. finding it early and making sure that patients understand what it is so if you can get it in stages one two and three that's optimal but b that even in stages four and five there are options yeah yeah there that's are true. options yeah and, you know once you realize that then the fatalism that's attached to people to being diagnosed it it disappears because you know wait a minute there are options what are my options and let's see how I can best utilize that for me and my family. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So tell us your why. So why, why do you do what you do with the foundation? Why? Give us a walk through that. Well, I've lost over, uh, I've lost 15 family members to chronic uh, and rare kidney disease. Well, at the time when I started the foundation, it was nine people. And I thought, huh. There has to be something genetic because of the way that we were with family members. You know, with pockets of people in in uh, in family units. So the mom and dad, four sisters. You know, the dad and and two kids. And then you just look at it and, and it's like, okay, how is how is this? possible and it's not genetic. There has to be at least some genetic factor that's informing all of this happening. And uh, so I was looking for that. And also, uh, I wanted to know, you know, what happens if you find it early? Can't we can't we stop this from from ending in in stage renal disease? Can't we fix that? And, you know, that was really what what made me go, okay, let's just take a look and see what can be done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the big thing for me uh, was, what, you know, I'd never really heard of kidney disease in my brain. It was something that old people got, right, or some unlucky soul. It wasn't like with cancer or prostate cancer, right? So prostate cancer, you know, you know, check your private parts, look for lumps, et cetera, right? I'd heard about that before. Breast cancer. And in my, for me, it felt like an injustice. Here's something that is happening that once you start looking into it, there's a way to screen for it. There are medications to reduce uh, the, the, uh, the possibility of it occurring as rampantly as it is in certain populations. It's like we have everything that's there but it's not getting to the people that's needed. And to me, that feels, I hate to use that word injustice, but it is, it's an injustice. It's an, and at first I thought, well, they're just doing this to black people. And then once you start looking at the numbers, they're doing it to everybody. When the magic they, I mean, by that, I mean, the medication and, and the therapeutics aren't getting out to us, right? And then yeah. coming in and volunteering with the foundation, kind of off and on with Tiffany when she was doing it full time, you just feel like, oh my God, right? There's all this wonderful technology, right? There are ways to uh, to, uh, to to find living donors, right? We know that living donors that is the I mean that's the great the great solution for those whose kidneys have failed, right? We have medications now, SGLT2 inhibitors that reduce right the 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 damage caused by diabetes, high blood pressure. And even now, there's research that's demonstrating that even with people who don't have diabetes and high blood pressure, but they had kidney failure, it actually reduces uh, the damage caused by, you know, that's going on in the body. And, and for me, I, I always say this on the station, I believe in American exceptionalism. I believe that America is the greatest country, faults and all, if there's a solution to a problem or, or we need a solution, we can eventually find it, right? And when you look at the kidney space, you're like, wait a minute, there's all types of solutions to the issue. There's ways to screen people. There's medication to give people if it's detected early. Like, what the heck is the solution, right? And I always emphasize that this is about building coalitions, right, across spaces, across space, right, to identify as the American descendant of the formerly enslaved FBA, right? I'm proud of that as an American. Right, but in the way our system is set up, we have to go and build coalitions. 
And I was like, why isn't this happening? Why aren't we getting the medications? Why are others who are also impacted by this getting the medications and the therapeutics? And that just doesn't sit right with me as an American that we have all of these technologies, all the stuff is available, but yet people aren't getting it. And to me, that's sad. And that's, that's my big why, is that it feels that there's a strong sense of injustice, right? I kind of, I was raised as a Baptist kiddo, and I'm like, this is wrong, and this needs to be correct, right? Yeah. A, a real sense of indignation on my part. So that's my why on my part there. Sorry to be a little preachy. No, that's good. That, that, that's, a good that's a good why. So uh, I, I'm teasing Tiffany because she went to an event uh, before we came on uh, in which it was a, a, a summit event, and she had a little more fire than I just presented there uh, on, on her why there. So give us a little bit about that, Tiffany. What went on uh, at that meeting and, uh, that you can share uh, that, that kind of got you stirred? Well, it was a global <laughs> health summit, and I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm I was invited to the Global Health Summit. It was held here in San Antonio, where we headquarter. Um, and I was invited by somebody from Austin. So I get there and the thing that I saw was there, there weren't very many black Americans there. There were like three or four of us. Um, no, I'm, black Americans as in uh, uh, this, you know, descendants of slaves of the formerly enslaved. There weren't very many of those. And then there were just a handful of, of uh, people who were Nigerian, uh, of African descent from different nations there. Just a handful of them. The folks that were there were largely, you know, a bunch of, of uh, scientists who didn't look like us. And it was supposed to be an equity summit you know, that was the theme of the summit. Uh, I think the theme was a great thing to have, uh, but there was there was a sore lack of representation of the people that actually are closest to the problem. You know, the pe people who are closest to the problem are the people that are the most likely to solve the problem or come up with solutions for the problem because uh, you have a vested interest in it. I mean, is there anybody that's going to be more interested in getting transplants to people than you, Rich? There may be people no. who are as interested, yeah. mm -hmm. but there's not going to be some scientist who is doing this for the arc of their career, <laughs> watching this right. build up right. Right. Or whatever, that's going to have nearly as much zeal for getting the information out to people for finding better therapeutic solutions than you. Because right. you went through this. Because I've been through it, yeah. People that are more on fire for it than me. Because uh, I've lost family members to this. I have yes. a, I have a genetic allele, APOL1, that is is uh, the first genetic allele that's been been connected to descendants of, of West Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, mm. you better believe I want to figure out what's, wrong, what's happening here and why we're not getting all of our options. So yeah, I right. did uh, go to that summit and ask a bunch of questions to the point where one of the uh, commissioners here said from the the uh, stage, "Don't get the mic," which which really annoyed me. What? Don't give him away. Don't let her ask. Her. But but I want somebody else to ask questions, and that was after I said to HHS that I didn't see them in these streets either, because we yeah. didn't see them in these streets. Hey, so let, let's clarify a couple of things, right? So, w which I want to clarify is one, we're not talking about us, you know, finding the medical solutions. The medical solutions no, are out no. there. Are people yeah, there. who have already found the solutions? There are people who th they're out there. I mean, they are available. They are there. We actually have therapeutics that are available that slow down yeah. the progression of kidney disease, that, yes. that impact diabetes in a in a very positive way. We have all this stuff, you guys. Yes. So, 
it's not making it to the African American community. It's not making it to the Hispanic community. It's not making it to poor white communities. It is not making it to people who do not have means. It's not making it to people who do have means. Yeah, well, it's, and, and, and that's the way it is. It's like you know, diseases seem like whatever, whatever person. I can't hear you, Reggie. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yep. Oh, you can. Okay, good. Now I say that the diseases are like whatever um, person that that is affected by it, you know, um, it seems like it don't get to it don't get to that community. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> you take you take Viagra, the, whoever invented Viagra, make sure every man. Boom. <laughs> See, I say something like that too. Like, come on now. You can, you can give Viagra to everybody out there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey, I love that. But it, hey, hey, let's go around this section. Up. I love it. All of you, Reg. All right, and you've been listening to that episode, that episode of On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin on 9:30 a.m. The Answer, home of Conservative Talk Radio. Uh-huh.